LabVIEW and NXT Part 1, the NXT Motors. Go into LabVIEW. Make sure that your new program is targeted to the NXT. And go to NXT IO. There you will find the motor control block. And this is the new style for programming the motors. Bring up the context help by pushing command shift H and the context help will tell you information about any block that you are using. We need to give the port and the power to this block. So create a constant and give it a power. You can go from 0 to 100. So this is going to go really fast. Now I'm going to give it the port. What port number or port letter is the motor plugged into? Right now I have one motor plugged into port A. So this is going to tell it to go forward. You have other options. And I want it to go forward for a certain amount of time, so I'm going to choose a weight block. And I'm going to tell it to run for some number of seconds. Create a constant. Let's go for three seconds. Connect the pink wires together so that we control the order. First, drive the motors forward, then wait for three seconds. And after we waited for three seconds, I want to tell the motor to stop. So I go grab a motor control, give it the same port, and I'm going to change its action to motor off, brake. And we can download this program to our brick and test it out but make sure that you always save your work so that you don't lose it. You can use the run button, but most times you're going to deploy. You're going to download it to the brick so that you can test it. So go ahead and click on deploy and we will test this out on our robot. When you've downloaded it, you need to find the program. So go to My Files, Software Files, and then there should be your program. Use the orange button to select it and then run it. You can see the motor is running. Well, let's try it again. Orange button to run it. There is my motor on port A running. All right, we've seen how to drive the motors for a certain amount of time. How can we drive them for a certain distance? We need to go to the complete palette to find more motor options. The block we're going to use is called drive distance and this will let us put in two motors at the same time. You'll see that we have a little enumeration right here for multiple motors. Grab that and we're going to wire that into our block. I'm actually using B and C for my drive motors. You can change the power and there is the distance and that's distance is in degrees. You can check your uh, context help to verify that. So command shift H will bring up context help and you can read about this block. It says distance is the number of degrees that the motor will turn. So Let's figure out how many degrees I need the motor to turn. First, measure the diameter of your wheel. Then, we want to find the circumference of the wheel. That will be how far it goes in one turn. When the wheel turns once, it will roll 7.1 inches. So to go 12 inches, we need to divide to find out how many rotations we need. And we need 1.7 rotations to go 12 inches. So we need to give that information to this block. What I'm going to do is take 
this. This is 360 degrees in one turn. We need to multiply that by our number of rotations. So we want to go not just one rotation, but 1 1.7. So it's almost 2 times 360. But we'll use the exact amount so that we can get it to drive as close to 12 inches as possible. All right, now we have our program and we can download it and test it out to see if our robot really drives 12 inches. Pretty good. We might get a little bit of error because it we rounded some of the numbers. Make sure you measure very carefully to get a very accurate distance. All right, after making it drive straight, let's see how we can make it turn. We can use the turn or the steering block, give it the same motors, and then you can give it a steering number. A 100 would make it turn very hard. A smaller number will make it turn not so sharp. A negative will make it turn in the opposite direction. So give it a number for how hard you want it to turn. Finally, there's one last set of blocks that we can use to drive the NXT motors. They are under the NXT native I.O. output palette. And they start out quite the same as our last blocks, but I use these when I want more control over my motors. I'm using the synchronize block so that I can control two motors at the same time. And you can see that I'm doing the same mathematical computation as I did before. 360 times 1.7. These blocks also can take degrees. So after I drive forward for 12 inches, I want it to turn. And I can use this same block to actually steer and turn the robot. I'm going to give it the degrees that I want the wheel to turn. Let's say 360 is fine. And there's also a steering input that we can create a constant. And just like before, a 100 will make it turn very hard. Negative 100 will make it turn in the opposite direction. And a smaller number in between will make it turn not so sharp. And you can see that in the context help. So first we're driving forwards 12 inches, then we're turning, then let us have us drive back again 12 inches to where we started from. I'm passing the motor information through, keeping the power at 75, the steering at zero because I don't want to turn, and I want it to drive 12 inches again, so I'm connecting it back to that old number that we figured out before. All right, it's time to test the program, so go ahead and deploy it to your brick. There are many blocks for driving your motors. Check all of them out. Use your context help to figure out how to use them. Your challenge is to make a program to drive your robot around a square.